I did not have sexual relations with that woman. Yes or no, did you ever take banned substances to enhance your cycling performance? Yes. I had no prior knowledge of the planned assault on Nancy Kerrigan. I am deeply sorry for my irresponsible and selfish behavior I engaged in. What's up, everybody? Welcome to Oops! The Podcast. I'm Julio Gallarotti, joined, as always, by Francis Ellis. Francis, good morning. How are you doing? Good, good morning, friend. How are you? I'm doing well. We're recording a little earlier uh, today because I am in the midst of a road trip. We'll get more into that later. Today, we have a very exciting special guest, comedian, awesome, hilarious person, Allie Colbert. Hello, gentlemen. Hi, Allie. Hi. Morning, guys. Allie, Allie has uh, appeared on Jimmy Fallon's Tonight Show. Uh, she has written for The Onion. She's been at The <laughs> Laughing Skull in uh, Georgia. I think that's Atlanta. Yeah. Um, yeah. And a very yeah. successful comic here. Based out of New York, right? You're based out of New York, right? Based out of New York, NYC. Awesome. If you guys didn't catch that subtext there, that Francis was laughing because he thought my introduction was so bad. He waited no. a moment <laughs> and then he filled in... The, de- the appropriate details. Thank you for helping, Francis. I well, didn't you, pick up on that. You I was said, just like, I guess Francis knows more. <laughs> <laughs> Julia, you said, what did you say? You were I got like, nervous. I got nervous. Hilarious, awesome, hilarious person. Ah, <laughs> it's really good. Very good. Um, Allie, it's, uh, it's 9 a.m. right now. We're recording this is the early, early bird special. If, if you don't yeah. mind, um, we'd love to, I'd love to just check in with Julio really quick and, and ask him, you know, where are you, Julio? What have you seen? What's happening? Um, right now, I am in Natchez, Mississippi. I don't know if I pronounced that correctly. Um, in the midst of, I guess, a kind of golf tour, uh, all places that I've never been. Have either of you guys ever been down here? No. No, um, I haven't. <laughs> Either of y'all been down here? You know, I, I, I've never been to Mississippi, Alabama, Arkansas, Louisiana, all those states that people sing about. I've never been to. <laughs> I mean, they're pretty, it's, it's nice, dude. Um, it's 8 a.m. here, and I wanted to do it a little earlier today because I want to try to make some ground so that I don't just fade into oblivion. Allie, I'm doing a road trip by myself. Um, and why are you doing this? I don't know. Oh, all right. I, I've been getting a little stir crazy the past few months. Um, I don't know if you guys feel the same. I know, Ali, you mentioned you were in LA and, and you've been able to move around a little, but I just haven't, I haven't felt like I've been on my own schedule at all. I felt like I've been staying with people and it's been hard to like live my own life. You know what I mean? I feel like at every corner I'm like making adjustments and this and that. And I'm just trying to like, now that I don't have anywhere to be, just trying to do something valuable. You're making a perplexed face, which I appreciate. Uh, well, it's just an <laughs> odd time for that. Uh, fair, fair. I agree, um, Allie. I don't know what happened to Julio. So let me clarify. So yeah. I agree. I agree with you, but I'm doing sort of like, quote unquote, COVID friendly activities. I'm not, you know, do going into really any city areas. I'm doing mostly like nature stuff and, you know, avoiding people doing all the the proper precautions so yeah i feel confident that i don't know i'm avoiding things i don't i don't know about you guys though like there's probably a, a moment in every day where i am questioning whether or not i have covid oh for sure like i'll start Dude. coughing i'm like do i have covid like are you it's just anything literally anything it, it um, happened to me yesterday but it hadn't it hadn't happened for a long time Um, and I don't know if that's because I'm now back in New York and I'm more in a place that, you know, I've been in Maine for months and Maine is, I think like bottom three states in terms of the severity of cases. But, um, back here, you know, what happened? I I, I got on the Peloton and, uh, (laughs) it was the hardest Peloton I've ever done. I mean, I was dying and granted i i'm writing it off to the fact that in maine the peloton is in my parents basement it's really cool there's very little humidity because they're near the water but and i i think the humidity and the heat here even though i was in an air-conditioned place at my friend's house i think it just but my numbers were so bad that i had to delete my class 
I deleted the score because I have people following me now and I can't be showing myself <laughs> to have fallen off from my typical. Oh, I didn't even know that's how Peloton worked. It's competitive, Allie. That? Watch out. It'll get or, you. Do you have like friends who follow you or you're like a person in that? You know, <laughs> I, 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 I have a bunch of friends. Yeah. But then one day I, I joined like a, they, now you can do hashtags. Mm. Um, and you can join sort of like riding groups or movements. And I joined the buns of anarchy, uh, hashtag and, um, I, I ride and you, with all you destroyed that class. <laughs> uh, yeah, I, I'm, I am the best, I think, or one of the best in that one. And You're one thing I'll dad. do. Yeah. Well, I'm, I'm really, uh, I'm are you really, on the bike right now? No. Wouldn't that be <laughs> funny? Oh God. That would be insane. You should do I'd that. I'd be such an that. asshole. Um, <laughs> But no, but I, I, what I'll also do is I will ride in a lot of the highly publicized rides. Like these Peloton instructors are becoming kind of celebrities in their own right. And they'll put on collaborations with like ESPN personalities or athletes or whatever and do it a noon ride on a Saturday, you know, and, and I'll join those and I'll, I'll be towards the top of the leaderboard, not to brag, but to brag. And, um, and a lot of people will see my name on there and I use a picture of me. I use Francis Ellis as my name. Mm. I want everyone to know who it is that they're losing to. So, uh, that's why I ended up getting a lot of followers. So I had to delete my score because my scores were so bad. Okay. Well, hopefully that doesn't come out. Well, yeah, I know, I know. I hope nobody screenshotted my lackluster performance. Hilarious. Um, <laughs> all right. Well, Ali, I um, don't know. I'm sure. I'm assuming you guys have both been following this, but this week, all of a sudden, uh, you know, I guess, I guess you could say the like Me Too movement sort of was reinvigorated. Oh, yeah. Um, yeah. There was all sorts of of shit going on, and I'm seeing people kind of posting these Twitter threads and. Um, you know, a lot of, the, and, and to be honest, a lot of the stuff is like things that I'm like not that surprised about. I don't know about you guys. I'm like, oh, okay, I'm not surprised this is coming out. Mm-hmm. Ali, have you experienced, you know, as a female entertainer, uh, any sort of like aggressive, weird behavior from people? Is that a stupid question? Is it so obvious that you have that like- To me, it's, it's so obvious. I've dealt with like so much of it, I feel. Like I, I even put out a tweet, like I've been invited to like hotel room meetings. Like I've been oh, asked to send pictures of myself to things. I've picked up FaceTime calls from people I thought that I worked for and they've had their clothes off. Like I've, I've like not, not all bad, real, real advances, clear advances. Oh man, Allie, I, I, I'm, I first of all, you know, I'm sorry to hear that. That just like sucks. It fucking yeah, it sucks. sucks. It sucks. Um, my question would be, do you, like what, what stops you from outing these people? Honestly, I don't really know. Like I, I've been thinking a lot about this recently. <laughs> I am just like nervous about burning bridges. I guess that's exactly, that's the power dynamic that everyone talks about. Um, Yeah, I'm just nervous about burning bridges. I I would need to do some more work on my, I don't know, I'm nervous that other women wouldn't come forward. I'm nervous that people would be like, oh, you know, she was, look what she got out of that. Like, I don't know, you know. 100%. Um, Okay, yeah, yeah. Because at the end of the day, it's like, so go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. No, you just, you also see a lot of like, I see people talk about this stuff on Twitter sometimes and like, you know, it's easy to judge the women who are like so reactive about this stuff too. Like even it's conditioned me, I'm like, shut up. Like I'm just, you know, <laughs> like even right. though I, even though I completely agree and see everything, it's just sometimes when it becomes like the one talking point that the one woman makes, it's like, even I'm like, ingrained to be like can you be quiet it's like and i hate that about myself but i it's just a whole mess isn't it yes it is <laughs> you had you had a great tweet um that i saw i actually saw it on uh, my friend erica spira's podcast instagram account shooters gotta shoot very funny podcast mm-hmm. you wrote stop saying underage women there is a word for that it is girls 
<laughs> right? I don't get why we're saying that. Why are we making it sound so much better than it is? <laughs> I, I have to say, I, I think I've probably been guilty at some point of saying underage women. And if I did that, it was because I was trying to be respectful and say the right thing. Yeah, which makes sense. I didn't even put it together until the other day and I saw all the Chris D'Elia stuff and it was, he was like, underage women, underage women. I'm like, you mean children? Like, th these are yeah. children. <laughs> like, he, he, they were like 15 year olds. Like, they should, I don't know. And then, whatever, there's all these things, consensual sex, consensual sex. Well, there's sex and there's rape. So is that what we're trying to do? I, I we've talked about this a lot lately in the pod and it, we we spent the whole last episode talking about it. I I my response to all the news about Chris D'Elia was I wrote a song. Um sort of one of the things I had seen was Oh, I saw that. Yeah. I saw that. I and I, that. Oh. oh, I'm so glad that you said that. Um because, you know, a lot of people didn't. Uh Really? I thought it was great. Thank you. And well, here's you guys do. Let me. Sorry, just quickly. I just want to say, and I don't know why I didn't know this was video, but you guys put up the best little clips on Instagram. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Shout nice. out, Chris. I Cox. always comment and like like them, and I don't even <laughs> like like podcasts. So thank you. It was very nice. Thank Very you. Fun. We uh, we <laughs> miss our we miss our studio, um, which <laughs> is, is more set up for it. But um, Chris Casso, our fantastic producer, is, is a genius at that. Um, but really quick, what I had seen was in response to the Dalia stuff, a lot of his, I think probably fans, had noted that in some of the states where some of his, his the, the, the underage girls that were sort of bringing to light his uh, conversations and stuff, in those states, some of them were like 17 and 16, and the actual law, the age of consent in those states, said that the age of consent was like 16 or 17. And some of his fans were saying like, well, in Colorado, where this conversation happened, technically it was legal. And I thought that that was the most ridiculous argument on his behalf that I'd ever heard. And so I wrote this song to not only like make fun of that specious argument, but also to bring like a little bit of, to try to bring, focus to the insanity that there is not a uniform age of consent which to me should at least be 18 um across across the board and yeah, right. then a lot of people said instead what i had done was i had drawn a roadmap for pedophiles to find <laughs> the states with the youngest ages of consent even though i found that information on a u.s government website from the first right. google search results so <laughs> right right I, I went off on our last podcast about it's this. It's crazy because after you released that, um, there was a 90% increase in pedophiles listening to this podcast. <laughs> yeah, and, and, <laughs> and doing what Julio is doing, setting out on the road to, uh, to drive to the, the younger state. Yeah, Get them while you're uh, young. I, so I was wondering this, because I know that you talk about on stage how you date men and women. Um, oh, yeah. I, I wonder if like... Oh, yeah, my sexuality. <laughs> no, no, because I, I feel like... Yeah, oh, yeah, I remember that. Well, this is um, an interesting thing in my mind because I'm like, do people who are creeps like hear that and then approach you differently? and like, okay. Or like whatever. I have so, so much to say about this. Okay, cool. So um, this goes either two ways. One is where... Well, first of all, I say on, on stage, I'll be like, I'm dating... I'll say on stage something like, I'm dating a woman right now. It doesn't matter what I say. I'll have a man come up to me after, hit on me, ask to take me. It just boom, boom. It doesn't matter. I could literally look someone in the eye and be like, I'm a lesbian. And they're like, nah. Okay, so. <laughs> so but Prove it. <laughs> if, this, is the, this is the issue. If I say that I usually date women, but once in a while I date men, that is the green light for every man. And that becomes this thing for men of like, um, I, if I could say one out of every 100, 100 men I'll date and every man's like, I'm the one. I'm like, you're not the one. So, <laughs> but men will either try and like get me involved in like, like a threesome or something or they're like, bring the girl you're dating. Like that's an exciting thing for them. 
which like, look, I don't blame them. That is exciting. Right. So right. bring, bring the girl you're dating, get a, get a picture, send me a picture of you and the girl you're dating, something like that. The other thing they'll do is they'll be like, look, you get it. We're friends. You can like, we can do this weird thing together. Something weird where they like angle it. Like you're like me, like some, something like that will happen. <laughs> It's so weird. I, I, that that strange. one confused me. I want, if you wouldn't mind, I'd like to hear more about that. Like, what are they trying? Are they trying to just downplay th- the pitch or something? I'm thinking of like a particular. Or do they think um, they can do like no be- like uh, no strings attached? Like, is that? I think it's like a like they think that like you know if we f- I think it's that if we fuck it doesn't matter as much. Right. It's not going to, who really cares? Um, well, or like, is that, be, are, do they feel like that's the case because you are with women? Maybe it's because I'm with women or maybe it's, I also think it somehow signals that I'm like very open to things uh-huh. and like open to a lot of different things. And like, I wouldn't mind being i i don't know it, it it just sends some idea that like i'm i'm down for a lot of stuff and i i'm not the person the type of person who says no that's i feel like what they're reading and it's funny it doesn't like in i don't know if i'm in wrong about this correct me but yeah. just because you date men and women doesn't mean that you're just down for lots of stuff necessarily you know what i mean no that- i am no i'm joking i am <laughs> I well mean, you and me ali you know I mean, we could uh... uh, julie's like you're not down for stuff right um, <laughs> um does that mean you're up for stuff or you know i don't I, yeah i of course it doesn't necessarily mean that i think that people just want to see what they want to see and they feel like certain i don't know what it is especially when you're talking about dating women and men on stage i think it's exciting for some dudes and hmm. i don't really know why well, i don't know what do you think i don't know i mean i'm trying to that i'm that's why i'm asking you just because I'm, I'm curious about how you feel about it i feel like you have a good grasp on your truth you know what I mean? Like, I've sort of felt like you seem com- fairly comfortable in your own skin. I don't know if that's correct. I, that's no, true. What I see I from mean, you. And like, I, like, I've had, um, it, this is getting hard without saying who these people are, but I like, <laughs> I've talked about like, maybe when I've auditioned for maybe a certain, <laughs> I can't <know. laughs> <laughs> but like, I'll say something in my set and then someone I care about professionally will come up to me after and be like, give me like a little weird touch and say like, Oh, I know you're not, I know you're not just into women or something like that. Mm. Jeez. That's, that's really unsavory. Yeah. Is, is there ever a point where like the guy who does that is so old that, and he's, and he's obviously not going to do anything more than that, that you're like, Oh, it's cute. Whatever. Um, no, I never think, <laughs> I I never think that'd think, be worse. I yeah. never think he's so old that that is just adorable. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not yeah. suggesting you should, by the way. I'm just curious. Because- well, that, that makes me think of, uh, president George, uh, HW Bush, who, you know, basically got me to as he was on like a respirator um, <laughs> and everyone, and he was like in a wheelchair and he would like goose oh, yeah. women in pictures with him. Oh my God. And they sort it, like in his last weeks of life, they, they brought it to light and the country didn't lose their shit as much as one might've thought because the guy was literally shitting him. <laughs> that age if you were a president you might get that eh, it's almost cute i don't know probably not though i don't know yeah that, i didn't i didn't love that when that happened i no. didn't hear i don't i didn't hear Just about there. that yeah <laughs> i was surprised to find raise his arms that far frankly <laughs> um so okay well wow well it's, ali i have a question for you because i so you do a thing on Instagram, which is one of those things where I saw it and I was like, God damn it. I should have fucking thought of that. And it, I was like upset for, for a little bit. And then not actually, but like 
then I was yeah. really enjoying seeing it. But this is, and Francis, I don't know if you've seen this, but she asked people to tell her their secrets. And they tell you some crazy shit. Like, is there anything, yeah. is there anything in particular that stands out to you as like really dark or weird? Um, well, okay. Well, some of them, it's funny that they just do that. I wonder if they think it's anonymous. Oh, right. They must know that know. it's not, right? Actually, I don't know. Maybe they don't know. Do they, do know. they message you from their account and then you post their account with the secret? I don't post their account. It's just how you can put that question box up uh -huh. on your story and uh -huh. they just so, can submit stuff that way. And I see the handle. I'm trying to think of dark stuff. Um, I think someone once said that said that they killed someone, but oh my God. killed someone and like gave a little bit of an explanation, but I didn't post it because I was like, I don't know what to do with this. Um, you're gonna have to take the stand on that one. I know. Um, <laughs> dark stuff. It's funny because the second I give one sort of like confession or secret attention, then I get like 20 others that sound just like it. And I'm like, right. you guys, right. I'm not a moron. Right. Mm. Especially with the, I do this bit in my standup about um, fucking your cousin. Mm -hmm. Right. And as one does. Mm -hmm. And it's, I think someone asked in the secrets, they're like, is it so bad to fuck your cousin? And it's like, it's not the worst. You know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> True. It's not great, but it's not the worst. Life's messy. You know, I'm not saying make a habit of it, but. And then I started getting all of these, like, I fucked my cousin, I fucked my cousin. I was like, okay, we can't make this the, like, I fucked my cousin page. You know what I mean? <laughs> wow. <laughs> so. I wow. have cousins who are married. Like, not first cousins, but, like, my mom's cousin in Italy, they're first cousins, they're married. So, like, different parts of the oh. world, you know? In, you know. But I don't think that's that accepted in Italy right now. Well, I don't know. But, like, <laughs> in, where she's from in Italy, she says that it's not super uncommon. I don't know, maybe that's like her generation and not anymore or whatever, but. Um, I feel so bad for my poor fucking cousins who follow me on Instagram and are like, what's her deal? <laughs> Guys, you know, there are some famous, <laughs> famous instances of this. FDR married Eleanor Roosevelt. Now, granted, they were, I think I'm reading fifth cousins once Does removed. So at that yeah, point. No. I'm talking I mean, first cousin. So, yeah. so did you specify that when you asked that question? Um, I, I, I tried to make it clear that like I was talking about a first cousin. <laughs> I see. Okay. Well, yeah. that is really close to home. I mean, you're the branches on that family tree shade each other, so to speak. Uh, yeah, yeah, for sure. That, that, and that is a little odd. I will say that when I was growing up, uh, and this is a little bit of a confession. Um, I had an older cousin for uh, who was probably four or f maybe, maybe, maybe six years older than me. Mm -hmm. And she was, she's stunning. She's absolutely stunning. And I had a crush on her. <laughs> I really did. I really had a crush on her. Um, and it, it didn't make any sense to me why that was inappropriate at that age. It wasn't until I turned like, I don't know, maybe 13 where I was like, oh, this is really frowned upon. I can't tell anyone this. You know what I mean? Mm, mm -hmm. that, yeah. Up until that point, she was just a, a young woman, a, a girl in my life who <laughs> was older than me and was sexy. I don't know. I don't know how else to put it. That's how I would put it. So yeah. yeah. Me, what do you want me to say? Yeah. No, I think it's, I think it's understandable. I really do. And I mean, Obviously, I have a bias on this, so I don't. Why am I the cousin fucker sympathy person? I don't know. I, I <laughs> how? Why am I branding myself like this? Why I'm going on this podcast, being like, "Yeah, I've been assaulted. You can fuck your cousin." <laughs> great, fucking great. Yeah. Oops. Yeah. Uh, we're like, we're like all these pedophiles. You're like, my 15 year old cousin was sexy. I'm like, she sounds sexy. That's all I. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus fucking Christ. I'm out of control. I also think it'd be funny if there was if there were pedophiles listening who were like who drew the line and were like, that is fucking disgusting that you would have a crush on your cousin. Family is off limits. Family right. is off limits. Classic. Hmm. Um I was uh, Ali, so do you ever find that this this 
the cousin thing reminded me of this. Um, when you say that you date guys and girls, are there ever girls who like will kind of fetishize you, who will like message you about it, who are into that kind of stuff, but are afraid to admit it. And they'll kind of like, do you ever f- feel any like subtle, weird stuff like that? Subtle, like hit out, like come ons? Like, I guess like, but sort in a way where it's like a conversation that isn't, you're not talking about that at all, but you feel some sense that this person is coming on to you in a subtle way. Sure, 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 sure. I mean, that's probably how women flirt more so than men. Like, I don't think like I get, a, I'll get messages from men all the time being like, what's up, you know, but like women will usually want to like say something or hang out after and say like, I really liked what you said. And that probably would be more of a tell, not that like women aren't allowed to even just say like, I like your content, but way less than, than men. Women aren't like, some will slide into DMs and stuff, but like not as often. God, this one fucking girl every day it's like a thing i'm like i've never replied every day it's a thing i'm like what are you doing you're like a man (laughs) and it's like aggressive and like overtly sexual or what it's like it's not overtly sexual it's just like can we please get a drink can we this can we that what i've noticed actually is that the few girls that i've had who are clearly interested in me it's not even that they say so much it's that they come to the shows regularly hmm Whereas the men will like say something, shoot their shot, and the women will just kind of like f- make themselves around. Mm. Which um. is realistically a more effective technique. Yeah. Yeah. It's also, it it's also just hover, in stalk. a gentler term, maybe, maybe stalking. Uh, yeah, would yeah. Be the way I would put that. Um, <laughs> <laughs> a gentle when, stalk. Yeah. When you, when you get these repetitive messages from that girl, have you opened her DM? Right. So this is what I've learned because I've made the mistake of you open the messages and then it kind of gives them the green light to keep going into your direct inbox. So I have to restrict them. Did you know that yeah, was a feature? Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah, I've done that okay. before. So yeah, I have like everyone I ever open, I then like go back and restrict because I don't want to like have a long, I don't want to, I'm not looking for a friendship. Okay. Mm. So like, I think that's nice. The one thing they said, but then it's just every fucking thing. Yeah. It's like right, DM right. timeout. Do you guys have lots of girls signed to your DMs? Yeah. Yeah. What do they say? They're usually pretty nice, out. to be honest. Do you, have uh, you ever gone on a date with a girl that way? No. I, I've been in a, we've both been in a relationship for like the same amount of time. We're both currently with serious girlfriends of almost two years. Um, and I wasn't getting enough DMs <laughs> before, like in this two, per- two year period, like I've gotten to the point where I'm getting more DMs. So previously, if I had gotten DMs from somebody who I thought looked cool or who I thought was cute or whatever, I probably would have gone out with them. I, I'm, mm-hmm. not a, I'm not a, a, against that necessarily. Yeah. What about you? Um, have I gone out with someone from my DMs? Yes, you but just, they like, weren't. met up with them. Yes, but they weren't. It wasn't like asking for like a date. It was like for something happened that we, we decided to meet up and it, it wasn't. I've never gone out with someone who's just hit me up and been like, do you want to go on a date? Right. I have a, I have a friend who's married to a woman that whose DMs he slid into. No okay. way. Just like out of the blue, didn't they did, had no idea who she was, saw her somehow and like started, that's started their marriage that way. Wow. That's well, great. I slid into my girlfriend's DMs technically. Your girlfriend is hot, I'm sorry to say. <laughs> Thank you. All right, yeah. I don't know who, who you're a, talking to. I, I think that's your girlfriend, the one you keep posting. Yeah, yeah. That's really nice. Yeah. Thank you. Two, the two of you are really good looking. <laughs> sorry, <laughs> Francis. I haven't no, seen your girlfriend. No, that's okay. That's okay. It's fine. Um, <laughs> her before? I, I don't even know. I lost okay. you. I lost you for a sec. Oh, shit. Sorry. No, you're Am good, I back? You're good. You, oh, you okay. It? Had you known of her before? Like, did you have some way or was it just a total cold DM? So I met her, I met her once and it was actually, I, it was like a weird encounter actually. Like I, and now that I know her, I never would have done any of the things that I did, which probably worked in my favor, but mm-hmm. I had met her once and then I sent her a DM of the guy surfing like sliding into the DMs, like very like kind of a corny, to be honest, like approach. And then I started like asking her to do stuff. Uh, and she didn't know much about me. 
And I was like, hey, do you want to like go do this tomorrow? She's like, I have a job. She kind of like mm-hmm. away for a while. <laughs> I have a job. <laughs> the, surf, the guy with the surf gif wants to see me tomorrow. Yeah, she's like, this guy sucks. Um, but then I was like kind of persistent. And then uh, she had a party at her house. We had mutual friends. I went over there. We talked. We went on a date. We actually got in a fight on our first date. About? About like, she was kind of like, I felt like she was being judgmental. She was asking me all these questions and then kind of like offering solutions, sort of like, again, like I, I just didn't know her well enough. She has, a, she has kind of a strong personality. Um, but from there, you know, we, we just- Hate that in a woman. <laughs> uh, <laughs> no, questions? Bad. She asked you questions? <laughs> she is, uh, no. she's, she's definitely great. But Dude, I, mean, I, I guess that's not like a cold slide in the DM. No, no, that, that's, that, there's reason for that. That's not just a total cold call. Uh, I do a lukewarm slide all the time. Yeah. Love the lukewarm. Yeah, a little preheated Love. oven. Yeah. Yeah. Ooh, Loop easy to get in there. <laughs> yeah, a little baked potato microwave. Slot. Uh, <laughs> no, but dude, dude, I, I think, I think pitching, and I look, I'm, I have no idea what the fuck I'm talking about. You know, you know, the sad part is, is that back when I would have, like, back when I was, there was a very short period of when I was single before my current girlfriend, where. I don't know. I didn't, I didn't really try many of the DM solicitations, but maybe like one or two. Um, and n- it never led to a date or anything. But now in, in at this period in my life, I have so much more, I guess, confidence and like awareness and so, you know, just, I think that if I were single now, I would, it would be much easier for me to actually meet interesting people or, or connect with, you know, people right. through, through that method. But, it, but the it's ship a has great, passed. it really is a great, I think Instagram's like the best dating app. Yeah. Really? Do you, you want to hear a couple of my, my tips? Yes. Please. Yes. More than okay, anything so in the world, Ron. One thing I think that, I think this is an easy way into the DMs where if you, if you start following them, if it's a cold follow, that's like, pretty bold make it a story reply that's like an easy intro Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. right i would do that but you know what i found works like the most effectively with girls in person do you guys have like moves that you like go to no i don't you don't no this is the most effective move i've ever found is that i meet a girl at a bar or something like that i call this the chat and leave you should get her to think you're going to spend all night talking to her. Give her a 20 minute good conversation and then just disappear. They're hooked. <sighs> wow. Well, how do you reconnect once you disappear though? Uh, you, you, okay. It's a dangerous move. So <laughs> <laughs> high risk, and high reward. It's a high risk, high reward. You're going to have to hope that she kind of like circles and like orbits to come back. Lots of times this will happen. There's a step two that's very advanced. I don't, it's like, this is a really advanced move. Are you ready? This is what you do. I'm serious. I've only done this a couple of times. You really have to be ready to do this. You, You can, okay, so you do the chat and leave. You leave. Fine. Circle back around. Give it a couple hours. But again, you gotta hope she doesn't leave. You gotta hope someone else doesn't swoop in. It's a whole thing. You go over, eventually you ask for her number. You say, can I get your number? She goes, yeah, you, you said, listen, I don't have my phone on me right now, <laughs> oh, Wow! but tell me your number and I'll remember it. Wow. Wait, just wow. wait. She, she goes, you're never going to remember it. You go, yes, I will. I really want to call you. She says your number. You have to repeat the number of yourself constantly. Two, one, two, blah, 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 blah. Great. Was I seeing you? The next day when you call her, her mind will be fucking blown. Wow. And you call and not text? No, call. Wow. Allie, hold on a second. I, 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 have some, I have some major complications with this strategy. Major complications here. What girl at a bar in her right mind is going to believe that you don't have your phone on you? This is what you say. This is what you say. First of all, you might have your phone on you. And you, you could say it's dead. Okay, that's Solid. fair. That's a good. My phone's uh-huh. dead. Asked an answer. Not actually dead. No, no. And this this and, is I just mean, a ploy to evoke wonder. 
Uh-huh. Crazy. And, and, and also brilliant memory skills. Right. I was going to yeah. say that your 10 number, uh, number retention situation has to be really high, but I, you're right. If you just repeat it, you'll be fine. And you don't most, most of the time you don't need the area code because you know it. So That's focus true. on the seven, focus yeah. on the last seven. I, you know, it would be really cute. What would be really mm-hmm. cute. I, I feel like right. this would be cute and disarming is if after she told you her number, you turn to your buddy and you say, dude, just remember three, four, seven. <laughs> That's and you great. give him the assignment of like three of the seven I love not that. ten digits. That is solid. <laughs> that is really cute. He's the gatekeeper of a third of the number. This is great. I'll tell you what, Ali, that would have definitely worked on my girlfriend. 100%. Mm. Now that I think about it. Especially there's something like really charming about, you know, old fashioned romance. Like, first of all, like your phone, you don't have your phone on you. You don't even care about your phone. That's hot. Yeah. Be, you, you are so interested that you're going to commit to remembering this number. Hot. And then the phone call is like the, the, the dagger. Boom. It's yeah. over. Hmm. Yeah. You know, you know what I like, speaking of kind of old school, um, and Allie, this is a little bit of when you asked if anyone had ever DM'd me and had I taken them up on it and a date or whatever. I have had a few times happen in my life where I've been at a bar or like a matcha store and um, – a girl will, I won't even realize I'm in a conversation or something and I'm there for 20, 30 minutes. And as a girl like is on her way out, she leaves me a napkin with her number on it. I love that. I love that. I've I never like that. called these people. I've never texted them, but I think it is a very cool. Wait, why not? Nothing good? Well, either either I was in a relationship or mm-hmm. I don't know. Yeah. Unfortunately, I just haven't, that's never happened with somebody that I was attracted to. Mm-hmm. What do you think? What do you guys think about this move? This is what I used to do when I was single. I would perform, I would see somebody in the crowd that I thought was cute, and then I would leave, but I would give the host my number to give to them. Wow. You think I that's think solid that's, or no? Oh, I think that's amazing. It's a courier service. I, I don't know that I agree, Allie. I, I, I slightly disagree. I, uh, there's a part well, of me you're- that thinks well, that yeah. it would be more, she would be more impressed if you had done it yourself. Oh, all right. Maybe, but I, if I were in the audience, I would be like, he probably, he's a performer. He probably has somewhere to go. We all know he's going nowhere. <laughs> 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 I think like he must, he must have a big something. And like the fact that he told the staff, I would feel like red carpet was put out for me. <laughs> you know, here's something funny. One time I did that. And I, I was dating somebody at the time who was a, not a great person. Um, and we had a wedding we were going to on Friday. And she, on Wednesday, she got cold feet. She's like, we're not technically boyfriend and girlfriend. This is too big of a step for me. I'm not going to the wedding. So now I don't, now I, I don't have no one to go to the wedding with. And I was like, oh, I'm, I'm butthurt about it. Anyway, I have a show and I see this girl in the front row who I think is like pretty cute, whatever. I, so I do this technique. I give my number to the host. He gives it to her. She texts me and I invite her to the wedding. And she's like, yeah, sure, I'll come. And then like, in the middle of the ride, like I started to realize that like she was, was just 15. like, she, <laughs> God no, but she was just like kind of sketchy. She was like, she was like, yeah, you know my uh, my stepdad, who's my uncle now. I was like, what does that mean? And she's like, yeah, you know, like my mom caught him with her sister, and was like, you can have him, you know. And I was like, okay, like that's kind of crazy. And then right. she's like, she's like, yeah, I'm a model. I was like, oh, nice, nice. Like you're a model, cool. And then we start talking about like ATM somehow. It's a long car ride. And she goes, she goes, yeah, like I just really love so-and-so bank because they always let me know how much cash I can deposit without being flagged by the IRS. And I was like, whoa. I was yeah. like, what are you, a model? Did you have fun at the wedding? We had a great time. She was great. Everybody loved her. Um, and then, you know, we like, we talked for a few weeks and it kind of fizzled out, but mm. I'm not sure. Maybe she was a stripper. I don't, I'm not really sure what her job was, Jesus. but I knew she got paid yeah, a lot of cash. Sounds like she had, knew her way around cash. Um, I, I, and also, this is, my mind is in the gutter. When you said ATM, I, I thought you meant the, the ass to mouth yeah. thing from porn. And <laughs> I just, I was like, that was so casually said, uh-huh. Julia. Uh, uh-huh. Long car ride, dude. Dude, uh-huh. th- this was, <laughs> this was my. Long car ride, dude. <laughs> This was my this was my thing. I did only did it like twice, but I 
had I been single longer, I think this would have been a good play. In New York, th- when I would go out and I would be out late, like if I was out at a nightclub, and I didn't go to nightclubs often, but like on the rare occasions where I was, um, I met a girl and I-, I would ask them if they wanted to go get breakfast that night. And we would leave like the nightclub at 2.30 or 3 in the morning and go to a diner and have like an omelet and then just like say goodnight. And that was, that would, it was like, there's something very safe about breakfast. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That is nice. Francis, I gotta say, you always preface any nightclub conversation by saying that you rarely go to nightclubs. So Mm -hmm. I don't know if I necessarily believe you, dude. You know, I, 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 it's weird. It's a great point. Um, I... (laughs) There was a peer. It's not like I wouldn't go. It, it would always pop up as a surprise. Like buddies of mine would be like, "Dude, we got a table. We're so, we decided to celebrate. Blah blah. Want to get involved? Just throw us like three hundred bucks or something." Because a lot of the time, you know, I couldn't afford to do like a six hundred dollar con- contribution to the nightclub. But if they like let me up, dude. off the hook a little bit, I could kind of join. Um, but that that worked out. I I met a girl who was really, really great, um, and ended up dating her after our breakfast, breakfast? date. Um, really? Yeah. But she was oh, nice. really religious, um, like super mm-hmm. religious. And after like four or five dates, and we were hanging out, she really wanted me to come to her church with her, and uh, th- I, ugh, that didn't. Nope. That was sort of the end of that. I don't know. Yeah. Sorry. Really. God is weird. I know it's a weird topic. <laughs> it's really weird. Like when I hear, it just creeps me out. I have a friend named Phil who's very religious, and he's a great guy. You can bust his balls about being religious, and he thinks it's funny. He'll bust your balls back. He's unbelievably religious, and I think that's those, great. No, that's those like, God guys are great. I work out with this guy who's a total God guy, like church every day, whatever. And like he thinks right now during coronavirus, this is the second coming. Oh, really? Or or the apocalypse? Isn't that the same? I no, I think I would think second coming refers to like the second coming of the Lord of like Jesus. But doesn't Jesus come at the end of the world? Oh, that's I don't know. Maybe, I don't like know. maybe. Anyways, I'm like you know I make fun of him for it all the time. He's chill about it, but like he believes, and like that I can roll with. I just can't okay. roll with like this pious like bullshit. Oppressive, oppressive like religion in friendship is is difficult to handle. Right. You don't mm-hmm. agree, right. and it's okay not to agree. I, I just because you're really religious doesn't mean I don't like you. Just don't like cram it down my throat constantly you know yeah, yeah totally. i tend to find that for the most part people who are god fearing uh are more happy um and maybe that's a total generalization but especially young people who have like found a place for god um because the world is moving much more secular you know what i mean like young people are disavowing religion uh but i find that if you it's like hill song is young people religion do you guys know hillsong yeah yeah Yeah. what is that dude hillsong so that's what this girl was into that's the church she brought me to and people might even take issue with me labeling it as such as a church but that's what she brought me to hillsong it's like basically a rock concert with all gorgeous like 24 year old people singing along to this incredible music that's like a, li- a little Christian Rocky, but it's like a live band. And then they have this amazing pastor. Oh, what the Carl Lentz, I think is his name. Yeah. Well, he's famous. He's like a dude. He's got like a sleeve of tattoos. He wears like flannels to deliver his So sermon. you even know about the religious clubs, Francis. What well, club I, I, don't you go to? I, I mean, I, I, I was really, I liked this girl a lot. And I went with her and I learned about all this stuff. And, you know, it, dude, this shit is a movement, man. I'm telling you, it's pop culture religion. Um, yeah. I, I'm, this Carl Lentz guy has like touched a lot of young, he's like Justin Bieber's pastor, uh, Kevin Durant. A lot of celebrities are infatuated with this guy um and it's cool because he guides his sermons towards young people and it's very it's very geared towards like being he'll like bring up instagram and the relevancy of like your your work calendar and how it relates to god it's not bible passages 
that are outdated and, and nobody can really connect to the world anymore. It's very uh, relevant and grounded in like the today. And he's, nice. he's like kind of a stand-up comic. He's like funny. Dude, he came into Barstool once and went on like a big podcast there. I mean, he's, Schultz is like a huge fan. Um, so anyway, all of that is to say that when I'm at this thing with her, you know, I'm like, oh, wow, maybe this isn't so bad. Like, this is kind of, I'd never, I hadn't been to church in over 15 years. And I effectively just Wait, checked you went? out. Yeah, I went, I went with this girl. I was trying to have sex with her. And, um, and the weird part was at, uh, at one point, they, they passed around the collection bucket. They did do that. And I was thinking to myself, like, well, what am I supposed to give? You know what I mean? And this was at a time when I like, wasn't making a whole lot of money. And I figured I would just match whatever the girl gave. Right. She, put, she put 20 bucks in. And I was like, uh. So I sort of waited for a moment in the song when she was in, you're singing as, they're, as you're putting yeah. your money in. And I waited until she was like in rap. Two $1 bills in. Um, but I've been paying for all of our brunches. I was like, I don't, you know. Did she see you put in two $1 bills? I crumpled them up so she couldn't tell how much money I was putting in. And I have to say the temptation to like actually take money myself was, was high. I had to mm. resist that. Yeah. But then after that, we went on a date and this is, this was the end of things. We went on a date where we started getting into squaring like science and Darwinism with her theory of the creation of earth. Um, and so I started bringing up some pretty irrefutable points about evolutionary <laughs> biology and it basic i could just see her world crumbling oh uh, no have you ever dated anybody religious Allie? um i had one girlfriend who was kind of religious and i didn't like that um <laughs> i don't not super religious because i just can't it's just like it's such a fundamental thing where I'm like, I can't get on board. Like, I'm not someone who can like respect that you're different. No, I'm joking. I, uh, <laughs> like, I just, it's too big of a thing if you're like so into God, right? Yeah. Yeah. It's a, it's a big thing for sure. I was one time dating, um, a girl who I'm Jewish. She's, she wasn't Jewish. And I was at her house for Christmas Eve and I remember sitting in her family room and like listening from the other room and hearing her dad, who was a firefighter, saying something like, you know, those fucking Jews start fires more than anybody else. Those fucking Jews with the fucking Shabbat candles. Oh, no. And I was like, oh, my I was God. like, I think your dad, I was like, I think your dad's going off on the Jews. And she was like, <laughs> oh my God, she like, dude. She was like, no, no, he's not, not my dad. I was like, no, I know. Like I can feel it in my fucking bones when someone's trying to send me to the showers. And, oh my God. Oh. And I, she was like, is he? And then we went over and he was like, she was like, Allie's Jewish. And he was like, so they start a lot of fucking fires. I'm sorry, but you know, no disrespect or nothing. And like I went, up, I went upstairs, I was like crying. And I was like, I have to leave the house. Oh my God. I love, that's just, it's Those funny. You start like, fires more than anyone else. Do you think that that was like pure anti Semitism, or had he just like gotten back from putting out a fire at the same building? Like, I, I think that a lot of Hasidic Jews start fires because they let their Shabbat candles burn out Friday nights mm. in Brooklyn, and firefighters are a little tired of it. Gotcha. 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 What a one, like, what a wildly specific anti-semitic thing to say yeah was, <laughs> that fucking killed me oh my and the god next, the next morning was christmas morning and i i remember i was gonna leave that day i wasn't gonna leave in the middle of the night i didn't have my own car or anything there and i woke up and i came downstairs and they would they were like around this christmas tree and they were like you can sit with us even though he's a jew like trying to make a joke out of it oh, and i was like okay yeah. <laughs> nice guys well nice. Here, here's the last question you know uh ali <laughs> like you talk about not, it, it, yeah, two religions are being too much to overcome 
you know, for a relationship. Do you think it's harder to square that? Or if someone you met was politically misaligned with your views? Oh, well, that wouldn't even be, I can't even. So you, you could, you would, it would be easier for you to date like a devout Christian than I don't, I don't mean to assume, but like, are you, are you, let's say you're a Democrat than to date. Let's say, let's say. Yeah, (laughs) right. Like then to date like a a staunch conservative. A hundred percent. Isn't that for you guys as well? Absolutely. Absolutely. It's, it's, it's for me, weirdly, like, I, I think they're, I think they're both look. Now, especially now, before, maybe not. Before I could maybe have dated somebody who had different views politically. Now I can't. Now it's too, it's too polarized and it's like too much. Dude, I, I, don't know that, I don't know that I am with you guys on this. Um, you could date someone who loved Trump, Francis. Well, see, but I, I'm not, I, here's what I was going to say. I was going to say that um, if someone was like very intellectually conservative, explain why they were aligned that way and uh and we could have like good debates about it then it just especially if it was a woman like especially if it was a woman conservative i could i could i think there's a part of me that thinks that might be kind of interesting no yeah but here's the thing the political like the the political debates that sort of like intellectual side of like politicking and thinking and philosophy is interesting and i might also find that sort of like fun to debate but the conversation has evolved to a point where it's not even about politics it's see it is about literally like human life and like i'm not down to like fuck around with that i i agree yeah yeah, I, I'm not picturing a girl who's like MAGA. Right. Black right. lives don't matter. Right. Or, Obviously, there's different kinds know, of conservatives. I, I'm not right. picturing that. I'm thinking of someone who's like trying to explain trickle down economics. Right, you know, right, right, right. The, the merits of Fair. John Maynard Keys or Mil- Milton Rose Friedman, all like, you know, economists. Yeah, for sure. Fair. Fair. Um, yeah. But yeah, it would be also hard to, it would, it, it would be very hard for me to date a pro life. Republican woman, right? Like that would just be so strange. And you'd also have to be super and stressful. Careful. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Right. My pullout game would increase. Uh, yeah. Cool. Wow. Um, wow. Awesome. Fascinating. Yeah. Really cool. Ali, where uh, where can we find you? Is there any stuff uh, you want people to check out? Um, I wish I had a show to plug. I uh, <laughs> I'm Ali Colbert on everything. Instagram A L I K O L B E R T Colbert with a K. Awesome. Awesome. Yeah. Um, fantastic, Allie. Well, thank you so much for joining us. It was really. Thank you. I'm going to miss you guys tomorrow morning. <laughs> when I have my coffee alone. I know. We have the same uh, oops, login, and password for all of our meetings. So if you catch us at so the right I'll, time. Maybe I'll just pop in. Maybe I'll yeah. pop in. Well, thank you're welcome you anytime. That's Allie Colbert. At- thoughts about dating uh if you want answer some of the questions we talked about today to oops the podcast at gmail.com as ever i am francis cc ellis on instagram he is not julio with a j um we will see you guys soon thanks so much